Father God, we come before you this morning. We thank you and we praise you for another day that you've allowed us to see. Another day that was not promised to any one of us, oh God, but because of your grace, mercy, oh God, you quickened us in our spirit to rise this morning. And so we say thank you. Have your way in our lives even the more. And God, we come before you this morning. We have a list, oh God, of prayer requests. And we just know, God, and we cast them upon you, for we know that you care for us. We lift up, oh God, Father, those that are sick among us right now. We pray for healing to take place, God. I lift up, Brother Miller, to you this morning, God, in the lower back pain. And I just ask you, pray, God, that you would just touch his body, God. Manifest your healing power within him, for we know that you are well able to do that, God. And so we just come before you in prayer, believing by faith, oh God, that you are already on the scene, God, and that you're already touching this body in Jesus' name. And Father, I just thank and praise you for what you're doing right now. I lift up, oh God, Brother Dave's mother-in-law to you, God, and just ask you to continue to move upon her body, God. And Father, you know all the things that's going on within her, God, and you, you know all things. And so we just ask and pray, God, that you would move by your spirit within her, in her body, God, and again, continue to strengthen Brother Dave and Sister Chase, look, God, as they uh, are praying for her, God, and standing in the gap for her. We just ask that you would have your way within them. We pray right now, God, for Brother Tracy's grandmother, God. We, again, thank you for 92 years of life. And Father, how you are moving by your spirit within her. We lift up his uncle to you, Michael Griffin, God. We're just asking and praying, God, while he's there in the hospital, that he recognizes, God, that you are, you are there with him, that he's not by himself, that you are everywhere, that your presence dwells all around about us, oh God. And we just pray that, Father, that you would move on his behalf, oh God, that your will be done in Jesus' name. And God, we know that you are able to heal. We know that you're able to set free. And so we're just praying right now, God, on Brother Michael Griffin's behalf, God, that you would move by your spirit upon his body in Jesus' name. God, we know that everything that the, that the enemy may try to bring upon our bodies, God, Father, we know that you are able to, to bring about a cure. And so I just thank you and praise you right now, God, that you are our, our cure. We just continue to lean and depend upon your word, your precious promises, that you will have your way in our midst even more. And God, I just pray right now for the, the widows that, that are not in our area, God, we just ask and pray you continue to watch over them, God, and to take care of them and the things that need to get done. God, I thank you for Brother Rice, Brother Reed, and others, oh God, in the community that are extending themselves out to provide assistance for them, God. We just ask you to strengthen them in the name of Jesus. And God, most of all, we're praying for unsaved loved ones, family, and friends, God, that you would touch their hearts, so God, that they will come to know you as Lord and Savior of their lives. We pray right now, God, that you would move by your spirit that as the word of God is being ministered to them, Father, as we bear witness of the truth to them, Father, that they will recognize it, God, and, and allow you to come into their hearts and, and for them to be saved in Jesus' name. So I just pray, God, that we will go forth as, as priests that you have called us forth to be, Father, in the, in the commission that you have sent us out to do, that we will go forth doing that in Jesus' name, that you will have your way. And God, I pray right now for the people of Ukraine that are being uh, in, in the midst of battle, in the midst of war, God, I pray for those that are out of homes, God, refugees going to various countries around the world. I just pray for their safety and welfare in Jesus' name. I pray for those that are extending themselves out to help them, oh God, to take them into their homes and provide food and shelter for them. I just ask you would have your way even the more to you you bless those family members, oh God, that are extending themselves out. And God, I pray right now, God, that you would touch the heart of President Putin, God. I, I pray that he would cease and desist, oh God, the actions that he's taken towards Ukraine. God, I, I pray that his heart be changed in Jesus' name. And God, we know that you're able to, to touch the hearts of man, that Father, we are able to be humble, oh God, in your presence. And so I pray right now, God, that he recognizes who he is. That he's just a mere man, God, but you are God, and you're able to bring about change, oh God. If we truly want to be changed, you can change us in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you again for the praise report of Brother uh, Rick's mother-in-law, God. I just thank and praise you, God, for what you're doing. That, that's truly a blessing, God. I just thank and praise you for that. I lift up the Collins family to you, God, and just ask and pray that you have your way within them. I continue to lift up missionary chips, God, so you will continue to manifest healing within his body and, again, continue to, to bless his wife, God. And I pray for all of our family members, God, those that are here in the sanctuary, as well as those that are online, God, that you will have your way in our lives. We pray for those, oh God, that will be traveling throughout the week, God. We just ask and pray for safe travel and mercies. In the name of Jesus, that you are dispatched your ministering angels to be encamped around about us all, God. And I pray, God, for all of those that's in the midst of an exercise right now that's taking place here in, in Korea, God. I just pray for safety, Father, and that everything will work out well, God. The exercise will be a success, God, and that they will get back to their, their regular lives, normal lives, oh God, and, and do what they do from day to day. Have your way, oh God. And I pray for the office environments, God, as they're going through changes. 
Father, we look to Brother Dave's office personnel as they go through changes there, God. We just pray for a harmonious atmosphere, oh God, that people will be willing and, and wanting to come to work, God, knowing that they're in a place where they can work together to accomplish that which they've been sent forth to do. Have your will, God. Continue to move by your spirit. Father, bless us as we go forth in our morning worship this morning. Have your way in all of our lives, God. Again, I just thank and praise you for all that you are doing and for all that you shall do on behalf of your people. Again, we give you glory, honor, and praise. And before I close out, God, I want to lift up Brother Baker to you, God, and just ask that you touch his body in Jesus' name. A humble servant, God, I just ask, oh God, you would move on his behalf in Jesus' name. Touch the hearts of the medical staff, God, that, that are tending to him, God. And just ask and pray, God, that you just watch over him, God, and continue to move by your spirit in his life. And again, we thank you, God, for the impact that he has had on, on many lives, God. I just ask you to move on his behalf now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Again, we thank and praise God for you to tuning in this morning and uh, appreciate uh, what God has been doing in us, through us, and for us as we're going forth in him. And uh, just thank him and praise him for all the things that, that he is doing, seen as well as the unseen. God is moving by his spirit. This morning, our Sunday school lesson, we're still in the book of uh, Corinthians and 2 Corinthians. Our subject this morning is God's comfort in trouble. And uh, Lesson text comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. And then a related scripture is from 1 Peter 4, 12 through 19. And the times is probably around AD 56, and the place is Macedonia. The golden text comes from 2 Corinthians 1 and 4, where it reads, Who comforted us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Our lesson outline is broken down in three parts. First one is comfort, coming from 2 Corinthians 1, 1 through 7, affliction, 2 Corinthians 1, 8 through 9, and then deliverance, 2 Corinthians uh, 1, 10 and 11. And I'll just go ahead and read our scripture reading for this morning. And it reads, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, with all the saints which are in Achaia. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforted us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same suffering which we also suffer. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye be also of the consolation. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble, which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despised even our life. But we had a sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raiseth the dead, who delivereth us from so great a death, and doeth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Ye also happen together by prayer for us, for that for the gift bestowed upon us by the same means of many persons, thanks be given by many on our behalf. So again, we thank and praise God for the reading and also the doers of his word. Uh, we just thank and praise God again for the opportunity of coming together this morning. And I just want to read a brief introduction out of the uh, expository says, have you ever needed to be comforted? I am not talking about just being soothed, but rather to be strengthened and empowered to rise above your struggles. In a world that is vehemently opposed to God, we represent. We go through trials and even persecutions as we serve Christ. If the Christian life is all roses, it is only because of the many thorns in the rose bush. Many people go through suffering and are desperate for comfort. 
What we need to realize is that Christ has suffered too, and he knows what we go through. It is futile to try to receive comfort from things such as alcohol, drugs, cigarettes, food, or anything else the world throws at us. Some try to read the latest books by popular self-help gurus only to find that nothing works. The way of the world provide no help for the child of God. The only one who can provide the comfort that will help us through the hardest trials and tragedies of life is Jesus Christ. And so again, we thank and praise God for this scripture and for this lesson this morning. And we're talking about the thanks, thanksgiving that, that Paul gives to God. You know, and, and understand that Paul went through quite a few things in his life. And we'll and we get, to, get to that. But I want us to know that as we're going through this, this lesson, the thing that we need to really gain from it is that God comforts us, but he also comforts us to be a comfort unto others. And that lets us know that when we go through our trials, when we go through the tribulations, the things that we face from day to day, God is there with us. We're not there by ourselves. You hear me say that many a times. We're, we're not without hope. We're not without help. God is with us and God is going to see us through. So when we need comfort, we go to the source of that comfort, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so we thank and praise God for Jesus Christ. We thank God for being the God that he is in our lives. And, and so again, we talked about comfort, the, the consolation that we have in, in that comfort that God gives us. And, and sometimes as we're going through life, we're going through the various things that we go through, you know, we can get uncomfortable in what we're going through and we can forget about the one that's able to provide us the comfort. And what we do instead is we begin to murmur and complain, but we need to get back to the point of, of seeking the face of God, the one that's able to help us through the things that we're going through. And I think sometimes as we go through these things and we recognize that God is there, that lets us again know that, that God is able to deliver, that God is able to set free. And so again, we get comfort through the Lord God. And so again, we wanna give him place in our lives. But the first uh, group of verses we want to go back through is uh, Corinthians 1, verses 1 through 7. And again, we see Paul here, and he was, he was again, claiming who he was in Christ Jesus. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, with all the saints which are in Achaia. And as he would normally do, when he go, you read through the epistles, you see where he gives a salutation. He says, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, and, and I think that's something that we need to say as, as we agree with each other, as we're talking to one another, that we're letting them know, you know, we appreciate you, we love you with the love of Christ, and we pray God's blessings upon you. You know, and, and, and as we're praying, we can say the same thing. You know, again, praying for those outside of ourselves, praying for our families, praying for our friends. These are the things that we need to do as people of God. Verse three goes on to say, blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the comfort, the God of all comfort. And so we have this introduction here, you know, that, that Christ is who he says he is. And we can hold fast to that because we know that God is one that will never lie. That what God says, he's able to perform in our lives. But there are things that we're going to go through, things that we're going to face in this life that will cause us to look back to, uh, to Jesus Christ our Lord when we're going through these times. And that's the blessed uh, part of it, is that we have someone that we can go to. We have a source that we can tap into that will help us when we're going through those difficult times that we face in life. God is there with us. And so we, the, the body of Christ, need to recognize that so that we can be a blessing unto other people as they're going through the things that they are going to. So when we say, blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, we know that to be true, but they don't know that. They don't know that God is the God of all comfort. And so it takes us uh, sharing the word of God with them to tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ and how we go through the things that we go through. And we can only go through it because Christ is with us and he's going to see us through. And so we, again, thinking about that, the father of mercies and the God of all comfort. Keep that in your, in your spirit, man. He is the God of all comfort. So no matter what we face, no matter what we go through, God is there. He's ever present. And so we just need to call upon him and know that he's there to, to see us through whatever it is that we are going through. Verse four goes on to say, who comforted us in all tribulation. And, and I know, you know, we talk about Jesus being the source of our comfort, but sometimes we seem to forget that. 
when we're going through times of tribulation, when we're going through difficult times that we face in life, we forget that God is the God of all comfort, as he says in verse three. He is the God of all comfort. So when we're going through tribulation, I believe we need to seek him and know that he's going to deliver us or that he's going to be with us in the midst of what we're going through. He's, he's there. But the other part of that is, is, is knowing God can help us through that. And so, again, tapping back into the God of all comfort. And so when we go through these things, know that God is there with us. Don't forget that we can seek him and, and, and know that he's there and that he will bring us out. And no matter where we are, God is there. And so, so he's ever present. In our lives, and so we want to continue to seek His face as as we go forth from day to day, trusting and believing in Him. And so, when God comforts us as we're going through what we're going through, that again helps us because when we see somebody that's going through and they need comfort, we now know how to minister to them because God ministered to us with the word of comfort. And it's like uh, I use as an example my uh, sister. Just lost a husband, my brother-in-law, two weeks ago, you know, and so when we, we talk to each other probably more frequently than we did before. You know, I try to call her up every other day or so just to see how she's going. But 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 I've lost relatives, friends in, in life. And so I dealt with that by going to God to help me. And so I was relaying to her that God is there, that God will see you through. And we can say that with our with our mind out of our head. But but when we're talking about death. All of us should be able to identify with that because we all have suffered deaths in our life and how we dealt with it. And then when we can share with other people that have gone through things, we can give them a word of comfort and we can give them the word of God. We want to share the word of God with them, the God of all comfort, that God is with you. And one of the scriptures that I, that I like to use, which is one of my favorite scriptures, is Psalm 46, verse 1, where it says, God is my refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. Well, sometimes... People don't want to hear that when they're going through the difficult times. So God has to deal with us on how we go to people and comfort them. And sometimes we don't have to say a word. We don't have to say a word, but just be there, you know, to let them know that we are there, they, they, that they have a shoulder to lean upon. And, and, and we don't have to say a word. It's just our presence. The presence of the Lord that's working through us, in us and for us is there for them. And so it's, it's how we go about. And so sometimes when you go to people, you know, and they had just suffered a death, that's the last thing they want to hear with you. I know how you feel. No, you don't. You know, you really don't. I mean, you know how to deal with death, but but in particular, their particular point of death. And so God gives us the, 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 the wisdom and the knowledge to be able to deal with, with, with such things because we've gone through it for ourselves. And so, again, it, it's a blessed uh, privilege to be able to go to somebody and to just to just to be there for them, even if we don't say anything just to let them know that, that I'm here for you. Anything that you need, anything that I can do for you, let I'm here to, to do that. And so you, you might give them your phone number, you may, and you may leave them a verse of scripture, you know, uh, you might give them a card of encouragement, you know, however God deals with you, but there is a way that God has dealt with each of us to be able to deal with other people. And so I believe that as we go through what we go through, we, we learn some things. And, uh, and so as we learn those things, God, again, will pull that out of us as we go to share with other people. So it's important that we that we turn to God, the one that's the source, you know, and, and realize that God is able to provide for them what they need. And so as we share in the word of God, we can share a word of comfort just by saying, I'm here for you. You know, you might give them a, a hug, a holy kiss and just be on your way. You know, but they just knowing that, that you mean well by them. And so they appreciate that. Verse five says, for the sufferings of Christ abound in us. So our consolation also abounded by Christ. And so as we're going through, again, as I say, you know, we, we have this need for comfort when we're going through times of suffering. And so it, it's not a time that we need to sit by ourselves and, and wallow in it. You know, we need to pick ourselves up. And the, and the way we pick ourselves up is, is going to the source, going to the word of God. And there is something in the word of God that we can read for ourselves. There is something in the word of God that may be shared to us by someone else in the, in the encouragement that they're giving. God has a way of giving us what we need. That's the consolation that we have, that we abound in Christ. You know, that God is going to see us through what we're going through. And it's not always going to be easy. I mean, there are difficult things, difficult circumstances that we face. But again, as I say, we're not facing it by ourselves because we're inviting the presence of the Lord in to help us along the way. And when we do that, that's where the peace comes in. 
That's where the peace of passive all understanding comes in. God is with us, you know, and he, and he sends that comfort that we need as we're going through the things uh, that we're going through. And so we should expect nothing less. You know, when God is on the scene, God shows up. Now, now I can have comfort in knowing that I'm, I'm not by myself. God is with me. He's going to see me through all these things. Verse six says, and whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation which is effectual and in, in the enduring of the same sufferings, which all, we also suffer. And so, as I was saying, we sometimes go through things, you know, we go through these afflictions uh, and we were all at one point where we were unsaved, you know, and so we go through various things, but this is the consolation and salvation. He says, you know, the, 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 the workings of all the things that we go through, it's like going through the pain, going through the suffering, but in the midst of all of that, it, it should grow us to the point of going back to God. I mean, when you think about it, it, it should drive us back to the source, drive us back to him. And this is where we get the comfort from. And so as we go through this time of, of enduring the, the suffering, we realize that God is the one that's helping us through. He's the one that's given us the, the, the help to make it through. And so we learn from that as we're suffering, as we're going through, God comforted me. And now when you see somebody else that's going through similar things, you know how to comfort them because you've gone through it. And I was talking to one of my uh, pastor friends uh, a while back, and he, he, he had suffered prostate cancer. And, you know, I, I always looked at him as being, man, this guy's healthy. I mean, he's healthy, slim and trim, you know, but it hit him. He went through the surgery and all the stuff, you know, and, and he's, he's been cleared, you know, and, and I thank and praise God that God moved on his behalf. But he says, but now I can, I can talk to people that have gone through prostate cancer surgery. I can identify with them because I've gone through it for myself. And I realized that as I was going through that I really only had one person I could really depend on, and that was God. And so that's, that said something to me. You know, we don't always know what it feels like. We don't always know what you're going through, but you're going through something. And so this is when we consult the face of God. We contact him and we ask him to help us through the things that we're going through. And it's important, again, that we can go back and go back to the word of God and we can share what God has done. I want to go to a scripture out of, out of uh, 1 Peter First Peter 5. And, uh, and just to share something, as we, we humble ourselves in the almighty hand of God, he tells us in, in, in chapter 5 of 1 Peter, he says, uh, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Verse 7, he goes on to say, and throw yourself or cast all your care upon him, for he cares for you. And that's another one of those scriptures that I, that I share with people when they're going through those times, when it just seems like everything is lost. I mean, it's like, man, it, it's a tough thing. And I share, well, you know, God cares for you. He loves you. And he wants you to cast that care. It could be worry. It could be anxiety. It could be waste. It could be anything that would so easily beset us from looking to God. God is saying, cast that care on me. For I, I care it for you, you know, and, and we just got to move on. We don't let that hinder us. And, and so we, we step out in that. And so it, it's like this morning, <laughs> we're going out to get into the, into the van. It was going to go pick Brother Rice up. And, uh, you know, I get to the parking lot and, and my wife was, was walking by, by the car. Somebody hit the car, the, the right quarter pound. And, and I got to replace a quarter pound. That's how they do it here in Korea. They don't just fix it. They get re re replaced. But, uh, I couldn't get upset about it. You know, that's why we, we have insurance, <laughs> you know. Say, well, we'll just have to get it fixed and, and press on. But I could have said, you know, they could have bothered me. I'm getting ready to go to church. I don't feel like going to church now. Well, I could have copped an attitude, you know. But no, I, I got, I'm comforted because I got, I got insurance. But let the insurance take care of it and be done with it. Move on. We're still going to press on. We're going to go to church and we're going to move on as if all is well. Because all is well. It's going to be worked out. And so it's, it's how we... Look at a thing, I guess you could say, or how we perceive a thing, you know. And, and we could lie. Our perception can come, can take us to a point to where we could go off on the deep end, and we can get worked up. Well, why get worked up, worked up over something that can be taken care of? And what I'm saying is, whatever it is that we're going through, our God can take care of it. There's a, a, a song that says, "Be not dismayed. God will take care of you. He can, and He will, if we would just learn to turn it over." To him. Then verse 7 says, and our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye be also 
of the consolation. Again, Paul was, was uh, encouraging the saints. He's saying, be steadfast. Know that, you know, what you're going through, the suffering that you're going through, as you're partaking of it, know that there's something that's going to come out on the latter end of that, that God is going to deliver you, that he's going to bring you out of it. It's not we ourselves. God is the one that's going to bring us out. And so when we continue to look to God and allow him to have his way, we have that hope that God's going to take care of this situation. God is going to move in the midst of our tribulation. God is going to move in the midst of our suffering. Whatever it is that we're going through, we have that consolation in knowing that God is with us. So I'm going to stop for a moment, give you an opportunity. You might, you might have something to share, scripture or, or comments, feel free to do so. I'd say as you was talking, I was thinking of some, some scriptures where, you know, uh, I put it up there in, in uh, Thessalonians in chapter four, it says we can comfort one another uh, when somebody does die and they, they need to understand that that's, I believe, and this is just my my thoughts, is the those uh, the, that passage of scriptures for the the believers, understanding that uh, we are going to die. If we're not, then we'll get caught up in the air, and and that's really for the believers, for the unbelievers. That's right. That's right. We, I think we have to take a, a different approach because if they don't understand and believe that, then they they you, you know it's we can tell them that, but it, it's just it's you know you know it's foolishness to to them they, they they can't comprehend that until they become a believer and so i believe right. we have to use different approaches for different people for believers you know we shouldn't worry about death and we encourage one another that if their 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 name is in the book of life then we'll see them again and for the unbeliever we can lead them to uh, to to the scriptures that God gives us to uh, encourage them and and uh, and comfort them. We have we have sixty six books, so God can can uh, give us the words we need because it's His words that we need to give to them to comfort them and to lead them to understanding. And it, that's really what it talks about there. And verses you know uh five uh, five through six about uh, consolation and and uh, suffering is for you know, it's for the end is really salvation to understand that uh, we're all appointed to die once and then there's judgment. So we need to make sure they understand that um, they, that the, that's going to come upon every man. So we can, we can comfort them, but also give them uh, the warning that, that comes with that. So really we have to approach the believer and the unbeliever with, with different, different ways, because the believer, we, we should be comforted knowing that, you know, we're going to be raised from the dead one day, or we're going to, rise to meet him in the air, uh, who, who's, who's alive. So those are wonderful things to, to lean on for the unbeliever. They, they need to understand what hope that we have in us. And we need to share the word of God that, that gives, that gives them the same hope that we have. Amen. Good comments. Good comments. Any others? Amen. And, and you're right. You know, that's the consolation that we have as believers. And, that, and that's so true. A lot of people are afraid to die. But if your life is right with Christ, you have no reason to, to, to be afraid you know, because you know you're going to meet your maker. And, it, and if there's any crying to be done, we should be crying down here because we're still here going through whatever we're going through. But where they're going, there's no more crying. There's no more dying. There's no more sickness, no more disease. I mean, it's, it's going to be a beautiful Amen. thing. That's what we look forward Amen. to. And so it's important that we that we know that. But again, we want them to know that, too, so that they can have that same uh, blessed assurance that they, too, are going to be with Christ Jesus, our Lord. So great comments, Brother Dave. Amen. Again, we thank and praise God for, for, for what he's doing in the midst. As we're going through these scriptures, verses of scripture, he's letting us know that I'm here. I'm, I'm here to help you. Uh, verse number nine. All right, let's go to number eight. He says, for we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble, which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even our life. But we had the sentence of death in our in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raised it to dead. And so what they what they were basically saying was, yeah, we we had a tough time. It's like what I sometimes say, you know, they had to the mark on them. They had to the mark of Christ, you know, upon their lives. And so they were going through some times of persecution. They were going through some time of affliction. You know, they were going through all these things, but in the midst of all the suffering and all that they were going through, they had that, again, that assurance of knowing that even if they died, that they were going to be raised from the dead. And so when you think about to, uh, another scripture that Paul talks about over in Philippians, I believe chapter two, 
I believe it is. And he says uh, to know him, to know him in the power of his resurrection, you know, and, and to know, and when you think about that, we're saying to know him in his resurrection, that Christ was raised from the dead. And so we know that, to know him in the power of his resurrection, the same God that was able to raise him up is also able to raise us up as well. And so again, we, we can bask in that, just knowing that God, and, and that's out of Philippians chapter three, verse 10. For I know him, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death, to know him. And so if we know him, then we know all the things that, that Christ went through. And we also know that on the third day that he rose up with all power in his hands. So we know that. And so we have that, that assurance, no matter what we may be going through, when we feel like we're being pressed out of measure, uh, above our own natural strength, we don't need to be in despair because we know that God is going to take care of us, that God is going to see us through. He goes on to say in verse 9, he says, it's like we had a, a sentence of death on ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God. So no matter what, again, what he's saying, what we went through, what we we're going through, it didn't matter because God was going to take care of us. God was going, God is going to deliver us out of the things that we go through. And I want to go a little bit further in, 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 uh, in the scripture from 2 Corinthians. I want you to turn with me to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, because there are some things that, that Paul, Paul went through. And, uh, and, and so you realize what he went through in, in, in his ministry for the cause of Christ. He went through something. I want to start at verse number 16. It says, uh, and I say again, let no man think me a fool, if otherwise yet as a fool receive me, that I may boast uh, myself a little. He, again, he's not boasting himself. He's giving the glory to God. Then he says that, that which I speak, I speak it not after the Lord, but as it were foolishly in this confidence of boasting, seeing that many glory after flesh, our glory also. And, but then he goes down into what starts to happen. He says, for ye suffer fools gladly, seeing ye yourselves are wise. He says, for ye suffer, if a man bring you into bondage, if a man deliver you, if a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face. He says, I speak as concerning reproach, as though we had been weak, howbeit were over in his bowl. I speak foolishly. I am bold also. When you think about the things, again, that Paul went through in his life, he was saying to us, you know, I went through these things, but he went through it knowing that God was with him through all of that. And uh, when I just think about what he went through in life, and, uh, and he went through some things for the cause of Christ. I mean, he was beaten. He was stoned. He was bit by a serpent. I mean, he's in shipwreck. He was in the pearls of the sea. I mean, Paul went through some things. So when he's talking, I, you can kind of get a grasp. You can understand what he went through. He, he knows what he's talking about because he trusted God through all the things that he went through. Verse 24 of that same scripture, verse uh, 2 Corinthians 11, look down at verse number 24. It says, of the Jews, five times received our 40 stripes, save one. Thrice I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeys often. You know, in perils often. I mean, he went through some things. And so that lets us know that we too are going to go through things in life. It's not going to be a bed of ease. And as we were talking about earlier in that introduction, he says, you know, you talk about the roses, but you have these nice roses, but there's a lot of thorns that comes along with that too. And so, yes, they're beautiful, but you can be pricked by those thorns that's in that bush. But, but again, we go through what we go through knowing fully well that God is going to deliver us and bring us out. So, so in the midst of our suffering, we still need to give glory to God because God is able to deliver us out of all the things that we are going through. We're not, again, just out there by ourselves. God is with us. He's everywhere. And so we continue to put our trust in him. And uh, Paul was saying, you know, we're fighting for our life. You know, it's like we were, we were really going through some things, but they went through it. This is what I want us to get out of this. They went through it. They came out of it. And so we're going through things in our lives and we're going to come out of it. Now, there may be a time when God say, okay, it's time to, to come on in and he may allow us to die, but still we're going to be with him. That's the assurance that we have that we're going to be with him. So I would just say to all of us today, just endure the suffering. 
endure the long suffering. Go through it. Christ went through it. And that lets us know who are we? Are, are we any different from Christ? You know, to, in that area saying that we can't go through this. Well, Christ went through it. So what makes us think that we're not going to go through times of, of suffering, long suffering or what have you? And like we're going to go through. The Bible tells us that we're going to go through these things uh, and we're going to have things in life, but it's going to come with some persecution. Again, it's not going to be a, a bed of ease, but we have that assurance that we have eternal life in, in the end. I recall, I'm going to turn over to, uh, to Mark real quick here. We have eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. In Mark chapter 10, and, and I'll read this for your hearing, starting at verse 28, it says, Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that has left house, brethren, sisters, father, or mother, or life, or I mean, a wife, or children, or lands for my sake and for the gospels. But he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands. And what does it say after that? With persecutions. And in the world to come, what? Eternal life. So everything that we're going through is, is good. It may not feel good to us, but it's good for us because it's growing us. It's causing us to mature. It's causing us to grow. It's causing us to surrender ourselves even the more unto God. That's what it does. It drives us back to him when we're going through such difficult times in life. It drives us back to seek his face even the more. And so, I, so, I, so there's a reason that we're going through what we go through. Is, is causing us to go back to Christ. And when I, when I say that, I think about what the world is going through now. You know, we're in this world. We're not of this world. We're in it. And we see all the things that's happening. But you can see that the world is being, being separated even more from the things of God, from the people of God. They don't even want to be around the people of God. You know, they want to go their own way, do their own thing. And when a person of, of, of God comes to them and, and tries to tell them, you know, you need to seek the face of God. You need him in your life, and they're rejecting you. You did your part. You gave them the word. You shared the word, you know, and you move on. You know, we don't beat them about the head and feet you know, with the word of God. We, we share with them, and we move on. The scripture says you shake the dust from off your feet. You know, it'd be best that, that they didn't even know. You know? But, but the thing is, that, but they do know because you shared it with them. And so it's important that we continue to uh, share the word with others, that they will come to know Jesus Christ as Lord. And Savior. You know, so we are at a point where we believe that I said this way: there is nothing that God does not know. God allows things to take place in our lives, as I say, that would drive us back to Him. When things get to the point to where we think we have control over what I'm saying, but when we think we have control, we really don't have control, then we go to the one that does have control. So I believe that as we're going through what we go through, God is saying. I'm in control and I want you to rely upon me to see you through. And so I, I've allowed this thing to happen, but in the midst of me allowing it to happen, I was hoping, praying that, you know, you would come back to me. And this is what God is saying. Even the backslide, he's still married to the backslide. He wants us to come back to him. Those that have drifted away, that have drifted apart from him. And so again, we just need to know that God wants us to come to him and to seek his face in all things. You know and again, when you think about this, think about the, the person of Job. And, and he was a righteous man. And Satan, how he was going to and fro. He, he was trying to find somebody that he could, could mess with. And then and God, God said, well, have you considered my servant Job? And you know, he says, well, you have a hedge of protection around about him. But if you remove that hedge and, and you know, let me go in and, and do what I'm going to do, want to do, then we'll see how, how steadfast and righteous you're going to be after that. And God told us, well, you can go, but just don't, you can't take his soul, you know, you can't take his life. And so Satan did what he did, but Job stood the test of time. You know, he, he said, he, he, even his wife said, curse God and just die. But he wouldn't do that. He said, blessed be the name of the Lord in the midst of all that he was going through. And so that, again, that lets us know that in this life, in this journey that we're on called life, you know, we're going to face some things. We're going to go through some things. But it's according to who you live for, how your it determines your outcome. If you're living for God, you already know what the outcome is going to be, that you're going to be victorious. And in the end, you have eternal life through Jesus Christ, 
our Lord. And, and that's the blessed assurance that we have in him, that we're going to be delivered. Uh, any comments so far? I think you, you know, hit a really good point. That, oh, go, ahead. <laughs> go ahead, Sister Linda. Go ahead, <clears throat> I was just thinking about, you know, everything you say, I already know, you know, and, and sometimes I'm pretty sure there are others who feel the same way. You know, we know what the word says. We know that our comfort is in God mm. and we can take courage in that. But it's, at the same time, there's always that fear of what of what you're desiring or, or or something not happening just like with Paul I was reading in this lesson and it says that even though Paul knew he had been called by God and he was persecuted and all the stuff that he went through and of course my you know what I've done doesn't come close to what I've you know encountered his doesn't come close to what Paul has done but even he had a fear he was afraid to the point of God having to come down himself or Jesus having to come down himself and say to him and assure him that it was going to work for his good. You know, pastor, sometimes I feel like that's what I need. I need mm -hmm. just Jesus himself to just come down and says, okay, sister Linda, don't my child don't, you know, you don't have to worry. You don't have to fret, you know, cause, um, because it's like, Although I've saw God's mighty hand in a number of things and throughout my life, I've seen his hand, I've seen the flow of God working in my life. There's always that something in the back of your mind that says, okay, what if this next thing you want or desire is not God's desire for you? You know, and 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 you and you you all you also know through the word that even if that doesn't happen. You know, the, you, there is an expected end and that expected right. end can be good, you know, and that that expected good end is going to be good. But it's like getting to that point. It's like it's, it's just because right now I saw God's hand through this whole move to Alaska, how he mm -hmm. just worked he got every little thing. If there if there if it appeared to be a, 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 a back set or something like that, it's like God showed up. You know, everything on this whole move to Alaska is like, God, you are just amazing. You know how you flowed this thing. Now I'm here. I'm in lodging. I enjoy being here in lodging, but I got to have a place. I got to find a place to live. <laughs> and it's expensive. It's expensive to live here. And although I'm not suffering, so to speak, I know that if you if your if your quality of life, like where you live and how you prepare to, you know, how you, how you live each and every day, how you are able to make your ends meet and all this kind of, if that doesn't work, it can bring on a sort of, uh, of maybe not suffering or dis but despair and discouragement and discontentment and all of this kind of, all of them D words, you know, it's, it, it can, it just, it can make your life miserable. And that's not the, kind of life, you know, that I believe that God wants us to live, although it is a part of life. Mm -hmm. And so right now I'm in lodging and I'm thinking, you know, my desire is to live on base because civilians can live on base here and your utilities are included in what you, you know, in what you pay. Mm -hmm. So God has blessed me with a good salary and, but, you know, it takes a good salary to live here. And I knew that before I came. But it's like my desire. I was hoping for, you know, to live here on base and, you know, things were just going to, and just like God did it in, in, in Korea and got me here. And, and as he's done over time, I have all I, I thought that, you know, he's he's going to do it for me here, too. Now, it's my desire to live here on base, but I've also prayed that God's will be done. So if it's, it's, if it's his will for me to live off base, I'm telling you now, what I've been looking at and <laughs> searching for, I have not found, you know, it has all mm -hmm. been, a, you know, so it's, and, 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 and again, I know that doesn't, um, you know, it doesn't compare to the kind of suffering we're talking about, but I do know that if your livelihood or your quality of life, the way we live and the way we go about and having our being and our day to day, I know that that can bring on 
some kinds of things that make us feel like we might be in, you know, doing some form of suffering. So mm. this is what I'm, you know, I'm, I believe God is going to work this situation out, Pastor. I've got another 60 days in lodging. So, you know, I, I've got more time to, to, you know, to look. But it's like every time I ask, I inquire about, you know, the, the housing here, it's like they're not opening it up to civilians right now because of the military. The military, of course, gets the first dibs, and, and I understand that. But it's like my time seems to be running out, you know? So it's like, oh, my goodness. But, yeah, I, my point is sometimes when we are in the mist when we are waiting or when we are going through or or you know dealing with the whatever the situations are it's like we know what the word of god does, says you know in james 4 and 2 have we have not because we ask not you know all this self talk that we can do through mm -hmm. the scriptures asking it will be given unto you seeking you shall find you know matthew 7 and 7 you know you can do all this self talk and you know encourage yourself in the lord because that's where our comfort comes from but at the same time like paul that was that fear in the back of your head like what is going to happen next or if it will happen the way we want it to amen amen well dave Oh, can we go off? I was just, I'm sorry, I had to get it off mute. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, so I was just thinking about what Sister Linda said and what we what we're reading, and you know, we can uh, and, I, and I understand what uh, you know Sister Linda just said because uh, I think we've all experienced something, and the Word of God says, you know, um, you, you know, in this this world, you're going to have tribulation. It was a, it was a promise, and but you know, also uh, He gives us uh, uh, comfort that you know while we're going through that, He said, "Be of good cheer. I've overcome the world, and that promise is given to us. We'll overcome. We uh, we may not get what we want, we may not get what we desire, but he, He's going to give us what we need because." He says, before you even ask, I know what you need. I take care of the, the I take care of all my creation. Uh, you know, I'm paraphrasing what it says, you know, I take care of the, to the birds of the field toil to the, and, and the, and the, the, uh, the flowers or I believe the lilies, do they spend, do they do any work, but he knows how to take care of his children. And so just think of what Job and Elijah went through. They went through, they went through some stuff. They didn't wake up that day and say, Hey, you know, I want to, I want to go through some tribulation. Even with Paul, I say, Hey, I want to go through all that. They didn't wake up that day. Yeah. Hey, I think I'm going to get in a ship, shipwreck, you know, spend a day and a night in the sea, wash ashore, then get by, bit by a servant, you know, through all of that, God's glory is revealed through, uh, through us by like you were saying how we react to that and people are watching us on how we react and how we react will either bring glory to god or or you know it because we we need to pre, be very careful on on how we do react sometimes we don't now i'm speaking for myself sometimes i don't react the right way but it, we need we need to uh think about that because it does affect the people um around us and you know the, the part of that you know, consolation is, it says, and it's about salvation. And so, you know, where is our hope? We, our hope is in, in eternal life, not on anything in this world, because all these things will pass away, but his word will not pass away. And so we can rest in his word, even though we may go we go through some stuff. That's where we're just blessed to have a Bible. There's some people that don't even have a Bible. We can turn to his word, read it and pray and ask God to help us through that where others don't have that um, same hope that, uh, that, that, that lies in us that where we can share that with others. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm just going to read through these last two verses. It says, who delivered us from so great a death and doeth deliver in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. He also helping together by prayer for us that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. And again, it, it takes us back to, as we've been talking about prayer the last few weeks of, of Bible study, you know, we need to pray one for another. It's important that we pray in the midst of all the things that's going on in the world. And, uh, and he was saying, we're, we're praying for many persons. That means, you know, I need prayer just as much as you need prayer. You know, it, it doesn't matter what title we may hold or position we hold or whatever, we all stand in the need of prayer. And God is able to answer those prayers. And so again, we, we he was, he was giving some credit here. He was saying, you know, he helping others together by prayer for us. 
you know, we're praying one for another that we will continue to go forth because we're going to go through some times of testing. We're going to be going through some times of our faith being tried. But I thank and praise God as we keep our eyes steadfastly on him. Again, he's going to deliver. And he delivers in the midst of prayer. And so it's important that we continue to pray and to hold fast to what God is saying for us to do. Uh, again, I thank and praise God for, for his deliverance in the midst of, of uh, going through, but persevering. But I know with my faith believing that God is going to deliver, that the end is not over. It's not over yet. And so as I'm, I'm striving to get to that end result, to get where God wants us to be, that, uh, that I know that even in the midst of death, I shall live through Christ because he has given it unto us, all of us eternal life that believe in him. So I would just again, just say this, persevere, continue to endure unto the end. Word of God says and that we should be saved. We know that to be true because it's, it, it says in the word of God. And so we know that God is, is a man. He cannot lie. So we continue to rely upon him. And understand that no matter how grave our situation is, know that our God is greater than that situation. That's another thing that we need to begin to see God as being big, strong, and mighty because he is. And he can deliver us through all the things that, that we're going through. He wants to comfort us. He wants to deliver us. He wants to, to, to see us through all the things that we're going through to continue to grow our faith in him. So it's just, a, again, a blessing to be where we are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Any other comments before we close out in prayer? Just a, a couple of things, Pastor, real quick. Um, one of the things that was put in my heart while everyone was sharing, um, basically, you know, what it says in the word, you know, God will not place on us more than we can bear. That's definitely a comforting understanding of God's, um, how God created us. You know, he knows what we can and cannot handle. And he won't put no more on us than bear. And in the midst of it all, uh, another scripture says, you know, those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. So we can we can definitely take heart in that as well, knowing that God will give us the strength and everything that we need to get through as long as we keep our faith in him. Amen. Amen. Well, again, I thank and praise God for all that were tuned in this morning. We're going to go ahead and close out with the word of prayer. And uh, again, just, just thank God for what for what he's doing. Father God, we come before you this morning. We thank you and praise you for this time of Sunday school, God. And we thank you for the comments that have been made, God. We thank you for your word, God. And we know that we can, can stand upon it, God, and that you'll work all things out for our good. I come before you, God. I lift up Sister Linda's situation to you right now, God. Even though she has an additional 60 days in lodging, God, we know that you have something in store for her, God. We know that to be true because we know, God, you are our sustainer. You are our provider. And so I just pray right now, God, even through that, that we can say thanks that you even made a way for her to be in lodging for another 60 days in some place that may not be uh, something that's afforded us. But God, I thank you and praise you that you're moving on her behalf right now. You know the desires of her heart, God. And we know that as we submit ourselves unto you, that we submit our, our desires, our will to you, your will will be done in our lives. And so we thank you and praise you for that right now. We say have your way in us even the more. Again, we give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.